Alright, today what I'm going to share with you guys is how to implement Sentry inside our Flutter web app. As you can see here, this is a Flutter web app. It looks very similar to the Linktree demo link on top of the video and you'll see all of this exception and this is the Sentry dashboard. Alright, let's demo it. Alright, you can see that it has been updated automatically with the exception that we have thrown to Sentry. For those who don't know Sentry, Sentry is basically an error catching platform or service that you can insert their SDK into your app and it's free for a while and it's been used by a lot of big companies and you can see the errors that you catch because when you build an app and you release it to production you need to catch all the errors because when user face bugs you must track down where exactly the error is and Sentry is one fantastic platform that you can use I've been using it for a while it's fantastic and it's pretty robust so yeah and when you see the errors here if you click on it you have the stack trace of where exactly your error happens so if you see here errors dot dot intro at line 196 so for flutter web apps the stack trace is not very good because it only stops at errors dot dot which is just a js implementation which is not what we're looking for we are looking for dot code which is pretty bad but at least you have some error catching so let's see the actual code on how to do it before we start, we need to initialize a project inside our Sentry dashboard. Once you have finished with your onboarding, your first page will look like this. So click I'm ready, select a platform that isn't actually a Flutter platform or Dart SDK. So what you need to do is you click all and then scroll all the way down to click on other and create project. So once you create the project, it will look something like this. What you need to do is actually you need to grab the DSN link. So how you do that is you click on skip this on body. Before we get the DSN code, DSN stands for data source name. It is like a URL, but it contains like the protocol, public key, server address, and the project identifier. So how you get the SDK is you go to settings and search for DSN. And this will reflect your DSN code over here. This code is very important because you are going to initialize it inside your Flutter web project. Next, we need to install the Sentry plugin into our Flutter web project. And this is where we are going to insert our DSN code from before. Let's go back to the Flutter project. Inside your PubSpec YAML, insert the Sentry plugin with the current version which I think is 3.0.0 plus 1 and just install it. Once you're done, you can create your Sentry client by importing Sentry Dart. A little info about Sentry Dart is that this is, if you guys can see, that you can actually import from browser client and IO client. Browser means the web and IO means the mobile development. So Sentry actually helps us combine these both clients and have a very simple if-else statement to see whether our platform is in web or mobile. Initialize your Sentry client like this by just having the Sentry client class with your DSN keys over here. And here we have our Flutter web project with just simple buttons that throws exception to our Sentry dashboard. Here we have is a button widget which throw a dot exception. Let's look at this dot exception and you can see here that it is a try and catch statement where it just throws a state error with the message this is a dot exception. However, when you want to catch it, it will actually return an error and a stack trace. This is needed when you use capture exception which is a method that is inside the Sentry client class. So the exception here actually takes in the error message that you have and the stack trace is where all those long stack trace that you see earlier of where exactly the error is but currently Flutter Web is not really stable and good so I will recommend you to actually put in a more detailed error here because the stack trace only returns you error.dot which is not exactly helpful for us 
All right, let's look at the next exception. Throw async dot exception, and this is basically a async method that throws a state error using async or you could say promise kind of error, which is like your Firestore and Firebase methods that you are using inside your Flutter web. Same thing, you will use an async method in your exception, and you can do the same thing here by just using the capture exception method with the error and stack trace. Lastly, we have plugin exception, which is using like method channels or even third party packages like Firestore or Firebase. And this will also use the same capture exception. Now you're wondering why am I using the same capture exception? Isn't there a better way? Glad you asked. There is. However, by using run zone, which is Basically, you have this on error parameters that allows us to catch any uncaught errors. This will be very helpful if we did not manage to catch errors that we forgot to catch it. And I think this is a very good implementation. However, Flutter Web is not stable. I've created a Flutter issue where run zone is not able to be used with Sentry and only this method works however using run zone most of the methods that i use does not work so i'm just waiting for the flutter team to help me or other people like yourself you can explore the error and see maybe you can find a way out so in summary you need your dsn code inside your sentry project and sadly you only can use the capture exception method for Sentry inside your Flutter web project. If you think this tutorial is helpful, give it a like. And if you want more videos, subscribe down below. See you next time. Bye bye.